Revelation 22, verses 12 through verse 19. I read today as always from the King James text. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters. Listen. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is of thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. If you'll bow your heads with me one more time, let's go to the Lord again. Master, we love you, God. We thank you for the Word of God. It is, in fact, today the bread of life. It is today that sustenance we require. It is the means whereby our faith grows and our faith is increased for you declare in your word faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God but Lord today we need a word from God we need to hear from heaven we need preachers who are willing to speak that which you would have them to speak but Lord we're in the last day we're in a dangerous time and more and more, men and women claiming to be men and women of God are failing in their responsibilities. Well, you've given me an important word for your church today. Give me the wisdom, the strength, the boldness to declare, thus saith the Lord, that the people of God might benefit from this prophetic word for we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. There is no book in the Bible that carries with it the same the same warnings that the book of Revelation carries with it. Many fundamentalists and evangelicals love to take the warning that I've just read to you at the end of our primary passage today concerning this book. And they will try to stretch that warning and they will try to say that this warning applies to the Bible, the entire Bible, the whole of God's Word. And I'm here to tell you today, that is a fib. That is not at all what God is saying. 
the Lord is speaking specifically of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation has so many powerful truths that are expounded within it. And God is saying, you had better not play with this prophetic word from God. One of the strangest statements that we read in our primary text today is found in the words, Blessed are they that do His commandments and they, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dog, so God is saying, Blessed are those who are going to be able to enter the city of God, the New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He said because outside of that, those who will not be gaining interest, those who will not be allowed in the kingdom of our God, right. he said those are, listen, dogs. Now, in biblical times, dogs were not kept the same way dogs are kept today. They were kept as pets, but only by the extremely well-to-do. Only by those who had a great deal of money. Because in biblical times, it was much harder for folks to get by. And guess what? Purina did not exist at that time. And there were no dog food companies who made dog food. So the only food that you could feed to a dog were the scraps that came from the owner's table. Tommy always gets on me for spoiling our dogs rotten with table scraps. Well, in biblical times, that's all they would have gotten was table scraps. But he said, those without our dogs and sorcerers. Now I want to tell you, sorcerers in this passage actually refers to a specific practice in biblical times. I'm not going to go into great detail with this because this message has a lot of scripture. And if you don't mind, I want to tell you right now, uh, I'm going to take all the time I need for this message because this message is going to go out today. I actually watched a lady from T.D. Jake's church, I believe it was his daughter, preaching at... Potter's house online the other day. I stopped and watched her for a few minutes. A beautiful young lady. I, from her name, I take it she's Brother Jake's daughter. And Tommy, her message was an hour and a half long. And I said, good God have mercy. And I, I get nervous if I come close to her, if I go over an hour. But her message was an hour and a half long. Well, I'm going to preach this message today, and I hope you'll take the time to hear it, because it's extremely important. The sorcerers refers to people who would engage in practices of divination, but they actually used... Uh, substances in order to alter their mindset. So literally, sorcerers in biblical times were kind of like American Indian or, or uh, Native American medicine men who would smoke certain herbs, you know, and <laughs> certain plants in order to alter their mind. And they believed that this made them open to the spirit realm. And this, and it does, <laughs> but not in a good way. He said those that are without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters. But here's the statement that I, having been born and raised in the Pentecostal church, i got to tell you a little secret. I don't know that I've ever in my life heard a message that dealt with the words I'm about to read to you. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Now you might understand today the notion of one who makes or creates a lie. But the question I'm asking in my message today is, who on earth could love a lie? 
He said, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. It's not just about somebody lying and, and uh, people making up lies, but also he's saying there are people who love the lies that are made up. Am I telling the truth today? Uh -huh. Yet in our world and even rampant within our church world today, there are millions of so-called believers who not only embrace lies, but they love the lies they embrace. Mm. So much so that they will argue and they will debate and they will defend those lies to the death. Did you hear what I said today? In 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 through 9, the Apostle Paul writes, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now our primary text today begins with the promise of the Lord's coming, doesn't it? Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Listen, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion mm. that they should believe a lie, mm. that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I want you to understand today, the opposite of loving a lie, quite simply, is loving the truth. Right. Unless we love truth, mm -hmm. we are vulnerable to believe and love lies. Those who teach, preach, and promote lies have an audience for a simple reason. Because there are people out there who will choose to believe a lie and reject the truth. Tommy, the only reason cults have members today is because people do not have a love for the truth in them and therefore 
they are willing to believe and love a lie. That's a dangerous place to be. It is incumbent upon us to seek God and to pray that He might give us a desire and a love for the truth. The Antichrist is said to be coming with all kinds of trickery and deceivableness in his arsenal. He will also demonstrate powers which will cause the observer to put their faith in him. Only the most, listen, only the most truth-loving believers will be able to withstand his idolatrous displays and deceptions. I hope you're hearing me so far. If you don't love truth, if truth isn't more important to you than anything in this world, then you are putting yourself in a dangerous, dangerous place. Because the only thing that can prevent the love of a lie is the love of the truth. Yet even today we have Christians whose fidelity is not to the Word of God or to established truths. They choose instead to believe blatant and obvious lies. Believing every word that is uttered by their leaders rather than weighing these words against God's Word. For instance, as I mentioned last week, we have Christian leaders declaring Donald Trump to be a Christian. When it takes no education, it doesn't even take a, a Christian walk to see that this man displays none of the fruits of the Spirit. Nope. And yet God's Word says we are to know a man by his fruit. As Christians who love truth, we know that the kingdom of God cannot be entered into without repentance. Nor can a Christian live a godly life without a life of godly sorrow when we sin or when we miserably fail the Lord followed by the humble act of contrition and repentance. You can't live for God unless you are able to do so humbly, unless you're able to feel godly sorrow when you sin or when you fail Him, and you then follow that godly sorrow with contrition and repentance. You can't, I preach the last Sunday, you can't get into the kingdom without repentance. You can't stay in the kingdom without repentance. Yet, Donald Trump has said over and over again, I watched it online this week. He was interviewed and asked if he had ever asked God for forgiveness if he had ever repented of sin. And he said, no, I don't, uh, I, I don't, I don't see where that's necessary. I, I don't believe that, I, I don't believe that that's needful, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, Tommy, somebody else interviewed him on another channel, mm -hmm. and they said, well, you got some blowback from having said that you've never repented and you've never asked God for forgiveness. So do you regret having said that? And you know what? He didn't back down one inch. He said, no, I don't see. I just, you know, I try to do the best I can, and I just don't see where it's necessary to ask for forgiveness. And over and over again, he was approached by various network interviewers. And over and over and over again, he made it abundantly clear that he does not feel that repentance and seeking God's forgiveness is even necessary. Mm -mm -mm. In spite of 
this spitting in the face of God's Word, Christian leaders so-called, I call them false prophets and false leaders, and church members by the millions continue to make excuses for and to explain away the godless, evil, ungodly claims, actions, words, and behaviors of this man. Those who have chosen to buy into this lie that this man is a Christian and this deception will sooner spend hours, hours defending this man than declaring and demonstrating the gospel and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. I've got family members, they will spend hours defending this man, claiming he is a Christian. Instead of talking about the love of God, instead of talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, instead of speaking those things which uh, elevate Christ and the gospel, they will spend hours and hours and hours defending a man who literally has spit in the face of God's word and said that repentance and seeking God's forgiveness is not necessary when the word of God tells us the exact opposite. And yet there are millions of so-called Christians today who love the lie. Yes, they do. They will believe what their leaders have told them. They will believe what Robert Jeffries at First Baptist in Dallas, Texas has told them. And I'm telling you today, as plain as I can tell you, there is no greater false prophet on the face of this planet than Mr. Jeffries. Mm. Nor is there a greater false prophet than Franklin Graham. Yeah, I said the names. Maybe I've missed something. Maybe you've seen fruit in the life and in the behavior of Mr. Trump that has never been demonstrated or displayed in my view. Hmm. Have you ever seen him possessing any of these qualities? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit, what does that mean? That means these things are the natural byproduct of the Spirit of God being in your life. And if you're a believer, then the Spirit of God is in your life. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you should have these fruits. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. peace, mm -hmm. long-suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness means self-control, temperance, what does temperance mean? Temperance means moderation. Against such there is no law. What I find interesting today is that many LGBT believers can and do demonstrate these fruits and yet they are condemned wholesale for their sexual orientation whereas a man on his third marriage who brags of his adulterous exploits who curses, ridicules, maligns and makes fun of his enemies belittles those who disagrees with him, lies with impunity to the point of utter insanity. And we've all seen him do this. We've all yes. seen him stand there and right. say things that every stinking person in this country knows the exact right. opposite is true. We've all watched him do this over and over. And who demonstrates, listen, no love, no faith, no patience, no meekness, no temperance, no long-suffering, no, no gentleness, no joy, no peace. Yet this person who 
has demonstrated absolutely none of the fruit of the Spirit, none, is heralded as a man of great faith mm -hmm. and a child of God. You know why? You know why these so-called Christian leaders, you know why these so-called Christians love the lie that this man is some great Christian and he is some great Christian leader? Do you know why they love the lie? See, there's always a reason. There's, there's a rule in psychology. When you study psychology, they will tell you when you're counseling someone, there's a rule that applies to every human being on this planet. Nobody stays anywhere in any situation or continues to do a certain thing a certain way except that they're getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. Now some of you may be saying, well, I don't know that that's true. Yeah. When you're counseling a woman who's in an abusive marriage and her husband abuses her and mistreats her, she's getting something out of that relationship. That's why she stays there. You say, oh, well, Pastor, that's terrible of you to say. No. The, the, folks, listen. It, you've got to look at this at the most practical level. It may be the security of having a home. It may be she's got somebody who buys groceries and feeds her. It may be, you know, that uh, she doesn't have to go out and work a job, whatever the case might be. But there is something she's getting out of that relationship that she's afraid if she left that relationship, she would lose. Mm -hmm. Or else she would probably do what is best for herself and leave. There's a lot of women who have stayed in bad marriages. And oh, I'm going to get some people mad at me today. Because there was something they got out of that marriage. It may simply have been, as I say, the security of a home. It may have been the sensation of being wanted or, or feeling secure. Mm -hmm. But everyone stays in a situation because they glean something from that situation. The same is true today for the church. The same is true today for those who would believe a lie and love a lie. Why would anybody love a lie? very simple. It's the matter of it. Because this man is assuring the religious right that they will have influence in American politics that they have long craved and yet which has for so long eluded them. So they're willing to pimp the children of God, they're willing to pimp the people of God for the sake of political power and political influence. And yet, the lie that this man is some great man of God, some great Christian, can be put to bed with one singular biblical passage. James 1.26 if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, listen, but deceiveth his own heart. <clears throat> In other words, if you just let your mouth run and you don't ever put the brakes on and you don't ever try to exercise any control over what comes out of your mouth, you are deceiving yourself. And James finishes this passage by saying, This man's religion is vain. Meaning, 
it is youthless, it is moot. Mm -hmm. Truth today is the inheritance of the church. In John 14, 15 through 17, Jesus declared, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Ghost, he said, is the spirit of truth. He said he has abided with you, but he shall be in you. Mm -hmm. Folks, the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is nothing more nor nothing less than Jesus Christ in spiritual form. That's all mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is. It is Jesus as spirit. Jesus is truth. Anything that contradicts truth, any lie, I don't care if it's a political lie, I don't care if it's a family member lying to you, I don't care if it's your husband or wife lying to you, any lie should be repulsive to Christian people. Yes. Because we love truth. Hello now. We celebrate truth. Truth is our inheritance. It is our possession by reason of God's spirit. Therefore, any lie, any deception is completely contrary to everything that is in us. So you have to sell your soul to love a lie. You have got to literally forfeit your love for the truth. Well, who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. You've got to forfeit your love for God in order to love a lie. We must be diligent and identify today not only lies and deceptions, but we are to identify those who lie and deceive. Mm -hmm. In Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, listen, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Listen. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them what? Liars. See, just because old Jeffries claims that he's an apostle just because he claims he's a big name in Christianity and he's a big leader in the Christian church doesn't mean he is what he claims to be. That's Hello right. now. That's right. And it is our job to try them. Yes. And if they're a liar, then we have to recognize they're a liar. We don't love their lies. We reject their lies. Do you hear what I'm telling you yes, today? Sir. The Word of God said, And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because, listen, thou hast left thy first love. Hmm. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of this place except thou repent. Twice Jesus says here we need, you need to repent. According to Mr. Trump, repentance is necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. 
Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. There's some folks listen to this old preacher preach. They, oh, Charles, you you get awful rough sometimes on some of these Christian people. You you tell them right straight that they're they're not doing right and they're not acting right. Uh huh. Yep. Because that's my job. That's right. If I'm going to preach the word, the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, he said, you've got to preach the word, be instant in season and out, out of season. Reprove, which means to correct. Rebuke, which means to chastise. Exhort, which means to encourage with all long suffering and doctrine. Listen to what Paul said to Timothy. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm. But after, listen, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, these teachers don't attract the people. The people elevate the teachers. The people find somebody who's willing to say what they want to hear, mm -hmm. and they then get under. You wonder how some of these TV preachers have so many followers. You wonder how come they got so many people going to some of these mega churches. It's because that person, that preacher, not because what he's saying is so wonderful, it's attracting you know all these people. No, no, no. It's the exact opposite. The people have elevated the preacher. The preacher is not attracted the people. Do you follow what I'm yes, telling you now? I. But listen to this in verse 4. 2 Timothy 4 and 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. 2 Peter 2 verses 1 through 3 as well as verses 9 through 16. Peter writes, but there were false prophets also among the people, meaning Israel, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord who that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many... Not a few, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. But listen to this next phrase. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The way of truth. Notice he didn't say the gospel. He said the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Let me tell you something. The conduct of evangelical America and fundamentalist America today has done more to destroy the integrity and the reputation of God's truth than ever any conduct in the history of our world. Yes, that's right. The church... And the truth of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ is being evil spoken of today because of why? Because they love a lie. Uh -huh. Because they would rather go down fighting for this man than fighting for Jesus. They no longer love the truth. They love a lie. Who can love a lie? That's who can love a lie. People who no longer love the truth. <sighs> and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Meaning quite simply, Judgment Day is coming, and they are going to answer to God for their conduct. Matthew 24, 11 through 13, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive again many. Not a few, not some, many. 
And because iniquity shall abound, listen, the love of many shall wax cold. When the love for God begins to fade, your love for the truth fades with it. Do you hear what I'm yes. telling you now? Mm -hmm. As your love for truth fades, then your willingness to love a lie grows. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. <coughs> Excuse me. God is not responsible today for waving a red flag and warning us of dangerous leaders with false messages. He has placed it in our hands to try the spirits of those who carry their message into our hearing. We must be willing to walk away, avoid, or even shun, as it were, those who proclaim falsehoods and promote a lie. 1 John 4, 1 through 8, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is is love. Truth and love are married one to another. You cannot embrace truth and not love. Nor can you preach hatred, malice, division, prejudice, and fear and claim to be speaking the truth. Amen. Oh my goodness. Truth encourages and promotes love. Mm -hmm. If anything ever come off this demon's lips, ever promoted love, I never heard it. Mm -hmm. Love promotes and encourages in turn truth. You love somebody, what do you want to do? You want to be truthful with them. Am I telling the truth? Right. When you love somebody, you want to be truthful. Right. You love mom and dad, you want to be truthful with mom and dad. You love your pastor, you want to be truthful with your pastor. You love your husband, your wife, you want to be truthful with your husband or your wife. Am I telling the truth? Yep. Truth binds and unites, whereas a lie divides and destroys. Mm -hmm. so and we are seeing in our nation today the byproduct of lies. We see how that rifts in our country are just being pulled and torn in order to serve someone's political interests and their lust for power. They're willing to literally just tear open every wound and every hurt in this nation. They're willing to divide on the basis of race. They're willing to divide on the basis of socioeconomic status. They're willing to divide based on the color of one's skin or the nation that someone may have originated from. 
1 Peter 1.22 Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. So obeying the truth through the Spirit, what is that? What's the byproduct of that? Unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. 1 John 3.18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Mm -hmm. Do you see how truth and love mm -hmm. work together? Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, mm -hmm. a lying tongue, <laughs> and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Listen, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. The term brethren here literally translates in the Hebrew people of the same nationality. Hmm. I'll tell you, God is not served when the people of America are not united. We do not have to agree on every point of doctrine. We do not have to agree on every religious belief. We do not have to agree on every political ideology to be united as a people. But over the last 30 years, there has been a movement on the part of one particular party to divide this nation and to try to drive us to the point of civil war. And I'm warning you today, folks, you better wake up. You better love the truth enough to see what's really happening mm -hmm. because too many people today are loving the lie and I got news for you people that love a lie will never make it into the kingdom of God you'll never see God's heaven in 2nd Peter 2 9 through 16 the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations or troubles and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord, but these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. <laughs> and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime, or to live, when it says to riot in the daytime, that, that's literally talking about people want to go out and get drunk and get smashed and party, and they, they don't do it after work at night, no, they do it all day long. Mm -hmm. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, 
which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. I'm going to tell you something, children. If God can talk through a donkey, He can talk through this jackass. There may be some of you folks out there, you don't want to hear what this old preacher has to say. You don't want to listen to what I'm trying to tell you. You love a lie and you're not going to be convinced for one moment that you're not in love with a lie. And I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to tell you. You can't love a lie and love the truth at the same time. It's impossible. But word of Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to love one and hate the other. Or you, to, you know, that's the only way it works. Got news for you. You cannot love truth and love a lie at the same time. In this passage, I'm trying to close today. I'm very close to my one hour mark. The word government is used. It says these people despise government. In this term, uh, uh, this term in the original Greek literally means uh, one who possesses dominion, power, or lordship. That means simply that people who do not like having to answer to someone. Hmm. See, we don't know anybody like that, do we? It does not speak of government in terms of a state, but rather the act of governing or exercising rule or authority over, even as many despise being under a pastor or a church leader. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13, And we beseech you therefore, brethren, we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. I never had so much trouble with church members thinking they knew better than the pastor, questioning and second-guessing the pastor, not letting the pastor do his job than I've had since I've been in affirming ministry. This is not a little problem. This is a massive problem in LGBT affirming ministry. Massive problem. I try to warn people. I try to do it as gently and as... as carefully as I can. If I know there's a character in the church who can be destructive, if I know there's somebody in the church who can sow division and strife and create problems, I may try to kind of warn you and gently, you know, kind of, it's kind of like being a shepherd, you know. I don't want to just out that person and, and, and tell you everything I know because that would not be good. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I kind of keep you apart from them because if you get too close to them, you belly up too close to them, you're going to wind up falling victim to their games. And I've got news for you. We are in a spiritual war today, folks. Satan puts people like this in every church. Yes. You have never been in a church that the devil didn't have somebody in that church who was there to destroy and divide. You, I don't care what church you've never that's been true. a part of. You have never been a part of a church that doesn't have because that's how the enemy works. And the pastor oftentimes knows good and well who these people are. But I can't just say to you, hey, listen, I know, I've been pastoring 35 years. The minute this person came in the church, I knew, uh-oh, we got some problems here. But you know what I try to do? Because I try to be a good pastor, I'm trying to help that person at the same time, mm -hmm. Tommy. Mm -hmm. 
I don't just, I don't look at them as the enemy. I look at them as somebody who's hurt, somebody who's wounded, somebody who's bruised, somebody who needs help. Maybe if if we reach them in just the right way, we can get them out of that destructive behavior. We can get them out of that destructive. But you know what? A lot of times is I'm trying to help that one, and at the same time I'm trying to kind of push these others to the side so they don't get too close to this one. They don't listen. They get too close. They say, you know, that guy's doing And we've got a mess on our hands. And the whole time, I knew good and bloody well what was going on. I could have told you long before it happened, it was going to happen. We had a couple start coming to our church years ago. I'm almost done, by the way, I promise. I'm very, very close to being done. We had a couple come to our church many years ago. They called me on the telephone before they first visited our church. And they were telling me some stuff about how they had been very disgruntled with a number of churches they had attended and all this. And over and over again, they kept saying, well, we went to this church and the pastor was mishandling the money. And we went to this church and the pastor was mishandling the funds. And we went to this church and the pastor was not doing with the money the way he ought to have been doing with the money. And we're going to come see, we're going to visit your church Sunday. And, uh, you know, I said, okay, well, well, we'll be looking for you. Hung up the phone. I turned to Tommy and I said to Tommy, these people are going to find fault with me after a little while. I said, they're, they're, they're going to... Uh, find some way to accuse me of mishandling the, the funds, the church funds. Now, he and I hadn't even been together all that long back then, and he said, well, how do you know that? I said, trust me. Just trust me. Let me tell you something, folks. If you just listen to people half the time, they'll tell you who they are. That's true. There's, there's a lot of stuff we preachers have learned the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know why that demon up there on that screen doesn't fool me? You know why I, that character never for one second fooled me? You know why? Because I've been pastoring for 35 years, and I know that if you listen, if you let people talk, they're going to show you what's in their heart. They're going to show you what's inside of them. And I have never seen anything good coming out of that thing right there. Never. When I saw the campaign in 2016, and the evil things he was saying about Hillary Clinton and just making such a fuss of you know, not just you know, not saying I'm the better man, I'm better qualified, I can do the job better, but at the same time throwing all these accusations at her. And it's not good enough to say, you know, she's not qualified. She, she, you know, no, it's all these evils throwing all this evil accusation. didn't fool me for a second because I know that according to the Word of God, what's inside someone is revealed by what comes out of their mouth. And when that couple was telling me, oh, this pastor was mishandling money, that, did that tell me that every church they went to had pastors that mishandled money? Nope, that's not what it told me. You know what it told me? It told me that these people find demons behind every tree. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I'll tell you what I mean. If you go into a situation and you've already got it in your head, every pastor that I've ever known mishandles money and abuses money, then guess what? Every pastor you ever meet, you're going to see them through your eyes as mishandling money. Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Say, oh, I'm not sure that's true. Well, let me put it into terms you might better understand. How about you ladies? And you dated these guys who were just junk. Cheated on you, lied to you, mistreated you. Every guy you dated after him, what did you expect from that guy? 
You expected him to lie. You expected him to cheat. You expected him to mistreat you. When you finally met a good guy, did you just immediately accept him as a good guy and say, oh, okay, this is a good guy. He's not like that. No, no, no. Chances are 9 out of 10 that you had to wrestle through all those issues from your past experience of I tell the truth in order to finally come to the place where you could feel comfortable and you could trust and you could rely on your new partner. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what happens, folks, <coughs> with people. This is, this is how church folks, they come into a situation and they're looking for a demon behind every tree. I've got news for you. The, and I've preached on, I've preached so many sermons on peripheral issues to what I'm preaching today. It's not even funny. I've talked about fear theology and how that the fundamentalist and the evangelical camp today preaches a message of fear. It's so funny because on one hand, they try to make you afraid by preaching, Jesus is coming, hallelujah. Oh, he's going to come. You're going to be lost. The rapture's going to happen. You're going to miss the rapture. Oh, you're going to have to go through the tribulation. That's their message. They're preaching fear to you. But let me tell you a little secret. It don't stop with you. They preach fear to their own congregation as well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh! This, this, this is a move toward the one world government. This is a move toward the one world church like the Bible said is coming. Okay. So what if it is? Bible said it's coming, didn't it? <laughs> now, which do you believe? Do you really believe what you preach or don't you believe what you preach? Because if, if I believe what I preach, then the more of this stuff I see happening, the closer I know I am to the return of the Lord. Right. Well, I ain't planning on being here for the worst of it, so I don't have a problem with those things. But if you notice, the fundamentalists and the evangelicals constantly are wanting to change things. Oh, this is a move toward one world government. We got to prevent that. Honey, you ain't going to prevent it. What, are you stupid or something? You think you're going to be able to prevent what God has said was going to happen. Why? Why would you want to prevent it anyway? But see, that's the spirit of fear. That's what they're preaching. Fear. Everything you hear preached from the majority of fundamentalist and evangelical churches today is based in fear. i got news for you. I'll say this, political. The Republican Party has been using that against the American people for decades. Because they know they've got an entire group of people over here who are going to vote for us as long as we can keep terrifying the holy fire out of them. As long as we keep them scared. It works. And it does work. It works absolutely. It works. Who could love a lie? I'll tell you who could love a lie. Somebody who does not love the truth. 2 Peter 2, we also read how that they speak evil of dignities. The word dignities in this passage in the original Greek literally means um, somebody who is deemed or someone who is judged good. In other words, somebody who gets a pat on the back, somebody who's well spoken of. If somebody has a good reputation, then those who are carnal and ungodly and evil in their behavior will speak evil of that person. Why? They can't stand the fact that that person has a good reputation and that person is well spoken of. My goodness, can I think of any example where somebody did this? Let me see. Could it be, um, let me see, Dr. Fauci, who has spent decades working in health and well-being for the American people. Never had any problems. Nobody ever spoke evil of him. Nobody ever spoke against him until this man came along. Mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden you were being told that this guy don't know what he's talking about. This guy's no good. This guy, he's all up and down. Blah, 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 blah. No, scientists are that way to begin with. They only can go by what they know when they know it. So yes, early on in the pandemic, he said, oh, I don't think we need to wear masks at this point. Then later in the pandemic, he said, oh, we found out masks are very important. They really do help. It's not a matter of him being an idiot. It's not a matter of him not knowing what he's talking about. It's a matter of this, the, the information was not available to him early on. But as the information came available to him, he passed it on to us. But we got people who think nothing of speaking evil of dignities. Lastly, in this passage, the Word of God said these people who are ungodly, these people who, are, who walk after the flesh, it said their eyes are full of adultery. In this passage, adultery, this is not referring to a man cheating on his wife or, or a person cheating on their spouse. The term adultery in this passage literally means an intimate alliance that is broken. Faithlessness to God or being apostate. In other words, they're not committing adultery on their spouse, they're committing adultery on God. If you read the book of Revelation, you read about the great whore of Revelation who's described as committing adultery with the kings of the earth. In other words, she called herself the church. She called herself part of the body of Christ. She called herself the bride of Christ. But she was going to bed with all kinds of political leaders in order to achieve political power. Oh, does that sound familiar? I'm closing right now. Who could believe the lie? Who could believe a lie? I tell you, who could believe a lie? Anyone that does not love truth. Say, Pastor, why have you preached this message today? I've preached it because every one of us, under the sound of my voice, if you're awake and you're alert and you see what's been happening in our country, what's been happening in our world, children, I got news for you. Donald J. Trump was a test run for the Antichrist. And the fundamentalist evangelical church of America failed that test miserably. If they, Tommy, would believe a lie from somebody who is so obviously a liar, I mean somebody who, who is out in your face lying, how in the world are they ever going to resist the Antichrist who is going, according to the Word of God, who is going to have all kinds of deceivableness? He's not going to come out looking like a liar. He's actually going to come out looking like he's telling the truth. The Antichrist, that is. On top of that, he's going to have powers that make him appear to be a god. Honey, if you could fall for the lie and the deception that we've seen in the United States of America in the last five years, if you could fall for that, God help your soul, you will never, ever, 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 ever survive the Antichrist. And I've got news for you. You can do everything you want to do to try to prevent it from happening. But Paul the Apostle told us that Jesus is not coming until the Antichrist has first appeared. And he said, the only people who are going to be able to resist his deception are people who love the truth. If you're willing to buy into a lie because it gives you political power and political influence, then you've already lost. Your soul is gone. Your love for God has been abandoned and you've gone to bed with the enemy in order to gain power and influence. Who can love a lie? I'll tell you who. 
somebody that doesn't love the truth. In closing today, the Word of God says in Proverbs 23, verse 23, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. There is nothing more important to us today than truth. Amen. Because the God we serve is truth. He is the author of truth. And He causes us, if we love Him, to love truth. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me this afternoon?